So who wants to see a low buck Gen 5 454 build with peanut port heads? This video and build up on a 454 Chevy is unique for three different reasons. First of all, I started out with a Gen 5 motor, the much maligned throttle body injected 454, but I usually go with a Gen 6 motor because it makes more power. It has hydraulic roller stuff. It has better cylinder heads, but this test all about the throttle body injected 454. The next thing that makes it unique is I wanted to retain the peanut port heads. The reason that everybody goes with the Gen 6 stuff or replaces the peanut port heads, they're small ports, they're not made for big power, but I wanted to keep them and show exactly what could be done if we build a torque application, which is perfect for those peanut port heads. The final reason is I actually upgraded this motor. That's right, I didn't just run it as a junkyard motor the way I normally do. Usually I will get the motor from the junkyard. If I take it apart, it's only to increase the ring gap so I can run boost, but I actually took this one apart, machined it, installed new pistons, upgraded the camshaft. I spent a little bit of money on this upgrade and that's unusual for me. So we got three reasons why this is unique, so let's check it out. This test on the big block Chevy is kind of unique and for two reasons. First of all, normally when I go to a wrecking yard, which I like to spend a lot of time at wrecking yard and want to bring them all home because I like all of the test motors, especially big blocks. When I go there, I normally look for a Gen 6 454. The reason that I like the Gen 6, one, just like the Gen 5, is it has a four bolt main and trying to find a Mark IV, an earlier Mark IV big block, is getting harder and harder to do and to find a four bolt version of that motor in a, in a junkyard is very hard. But luckily the Gen 5 and Gen 6 stuff is all four bolt, so I like that. And one, the re other reason I look for the Gen 6 stuff is it is a factory hydraulic roller cam, which I prefer a hydraulic roller cam. We can go with a little more aggressive profile and stuff, and I like the hydraulic roller stuff. It just seems to work out better. Also, the Gen 6 has a much better cylinder head on it than the Gen 5, and we're going to talk about that later when we talk about what I would have changed with this particular test. But everybody doesn't have a Gen 6, and everybody doesn't go get a Gen 6. There's lots of Gen 5 stuff on out there, so that's why I wanted to do this test with a Gen 5. I also wanted to show that the peanut port head, although it's much maligned and it's not the ideal choice for lots and lots of power, there are a lot of good applications for it and I want to show people what happens when you do a build up and retain the peanut port head because it actually works fairly well for a torquey combination which is what we were looking to do here. So what I did was went to the wrecking yard, picked up a 1992 Gen 5, which is the throttle body injected Gen 5 454. It's the same kind of motor that came in the uh, <laughs> the awesome uh, 454 SS truck or SS 454. I really like that truck. I think that they look awesome. I, even today, I think that they look awesome. And since they have a big block in it, it's always a good starting point as a buildup. I remember running the Silver State race for all of those years and the guys from Arizona Speed Marine, I think, brought out one of these 454 SS trucks to run it in a top speed event, which truck and a top speed event, <laughs> always an awesome combination. So to get things started, I went to the wrecking yard, pick up the 1992 junkyard 455 or 454. And what we did was take off the throttle body injection and put on a standard carbureted induction system. This was a dual plane wine intake, a Holly 750 carburetor. And we put in a distributor. Obviously we had to remove the um, injected distributor. So we ran this thing with long tube headers and run on the engine dyno this otherwise stock gen 5 454 produced 334 horsepower and 448 foot pounds of torque now i'm always going to get the guys there's always going to be one or two or 10 or 15 guys that say yeah i was rated at you know between 230 and 255 horsepower depending on which application you had um, whether you had the ss but why was it rated so low and why are you making so much power? Is that just a happy dyno or is this stuff all made up? And, you know, we get all kinds of conspiracy theories. <laughs> but the answer is always the same. And, and loyal guys from the that have been following the channel know what the answer is. And that's just is our te test method. We run this thing cold. We run this thing with an electric water pump and no accessories. We run it with long tube headers. We run it with an optimized tune, which the factory doesn't do. And in this case, we also ran it with a different induction system. System. It doesn't have the throttle body injection, which the throttle body itself might not be the limiting factor in this in this kind of power output. But 
the throttle body intake manifold is not ideal. So the combination of all of that stuff means that this is the power that the motor makes. <laughs> These are real numbers. They're just a starting point for what we're going to do to upgrade it. So it really doesn't matter what the starting point is as long as you're testing it in the same method on the same dyno. And when we go up in power, we go up in power and you would do that on any dyno. So now let's take a look and see what happened when we upgraded our 1992 Gen 5 454 and see how much power it makes. Not only was this test unique because I chose a Gen 5 test motor rather than the Gen 6, but also because I didn't just use this as your normal junkyard motor. We actually upgraded this thing, so I spent some money and we had the thing <laughs> rebuilt. But in rebuilding it, we made some um, interesting steps to help improve the power, and I think it made it a better combination. The first thing I did is we took the motor apart and took it down to our guys down at L&R, and they rebuilt this thing. They started out by boring the block 30 over to accept a set of forged pistons. Now, we retained the factory cast crank and factory rods, but we upgraded the pistons to forged pistons, and the forged piston wasn't really a necessity, especially for the power level that we were looking for but we did want to upgrade the dome design because what I wanted to do is increase the static compression on this thing so we stepped up to you know your typical kind of 18 to 20 cc dome that increased the the compression ratio up to about nine and a half to one nine four nine five and which is a good benefit because these big blocks are all fairly low compression they all have big chamber heads and a flat top piston in them or even a dish piston in them and it's just not a good combination for making power so adding compression definitely a good way to go so this forged piston allowed us to do that and this this was a 30 over probe piston it also brought the displacement up which adds a little bit more compression just from the increase in displacement so to go along with that and to help this thing make power but again we were still looking at making this kind of a torque motor a low RPM torque motor, we chose our camshaft accordingly. It was still a flat tap of cam, it was from Comp Cams. It was an Extreme Energy 268, and for a big block, it was still a fairly mild cam. It was a 515-520 lift split. It was a 224, 230 degree duration split and 110 degree lobe separation angle. As I said, performance cam, but still fairly mild for big block standards, especially on the lift side. Now, the the peanut port heads were given a once over as well. We didn't do any porting to them, but we did um, just do a surface on them to make sure that the deck was even. We also did, a, they also, the guys at LNR also did a valve job on it. We kept the standard valves. We did upgrade the springs to work with the camshaft. But basically, it was just a fresh set of uh, peanut port heads, <laughs> not a performance upgrade. But I wanted to retain the peanut port heads because I wanted to demonstrate what they would do if you had improved the other things that we did, like with the camshaft and the compression ratio. So here's what happened. Then we put the thing, obviously, back up on the dyno and ran it again with a dual plane intake and a 750 Holley and, and the long tube headers. We obviously optimized the timing and stuff also. So here's what happened when we up upgraded our combination. And this is why I liked retaining the peanut port heads and making the upgrades that we did. Improving the compression, improving the cam timing, pushed peak power up to 446 horsepower, and peak torque jumped up to 542 foot-pounds. And that was really the, the thing for this. I wanted to show that with the peanut port heads and a mild camshaft in this thing and a dual plane intake, which is the obvious choice for this over a single plane for something you're trying to make torque with. But this allowed our combination to not only make more power out of the top, which we kind of would expect of a camshaft, but the added com compression and retaining the peanut port heads allowed us to improve torque production by a hundred foot pounds of torque so that's a pretty good amount um, you know nearly nearly a hundred foot pounds that's a pretty good amount and I like the fact that we improved torque production basically everywhere now I, I, I know <laughs> I should have started this thing at 2000 rpm like I did with the stock one but you can see it's going to be way above the stock torque production even down low the combination of the um, the increasing compression and the cam timing improve power basically everywhere and, and would even down at 2000 rpm because as i said that 268 cam although it allowed the thing to rev a little higher still fairly mild for a big block but now what i want to do is talk about what i would change on this combination if I were to do it today, because I ran this test long ago, and it would be changes to both improve the power, I think, 
and also to reduce the cost of doing something like this. So let's talk about that now. Okay guys, what'd you think about the build up on our peanut port 454? I think it worked out fairly well. We got really good torque. We got a reasonable amount of power. We retained the peanut port heads and everything worked well, but here's what I would change if I were doing it today. And here's where I want your input. Let me know in the comments what you guys would do and if you think that this is a good approach or if anybody's ever taken this approach because I haven't actually run this test, although maybe I should. Here's what I would change. Instead of going to all the trouble and expense of upgrading the pistons to raise the compression ratio, I think a better option might be replace the peanut port heads. I know I said I wanted to keep them and I like them and we've made lots of power with peanut port heads. If you take a look at the oval port head test that's already up, you can take a look at that and see that we made over 500 horsepower using this same set of peanut port heads on a much wilder combination. So you definitely can make more power than we made here with a peanut port head, especially in ported form. But I think what I would do for this combination, I would go get a Gen 5 454 from the Wrecking Yard like we did, but I would upgrade it with Gen 6 cylinder heads because that Gen 6 cylinder head, not only does it have a bigger standard size oval port, it has a much smaller combustion chamber. The ones that we tested measured 102 cc's. So that would raise the compression about the same amount as we did upgrading the pistons and it would be much cheaper because I'll tell you here's the cheap deal if you're going to do this and build this kind of hybrid if you go to the wrecking yard and find a gen 5 and a gen 6 and you want to do this hybrid simply take the gen 5 heads off put the gen 6 heads on and then buy the whole motor as a complete motor because it's much cheaper that way you don't have to buy the motor and then buy the heads and then do the upgrade and throw your peanut port heads away that way you can buy one motor have it upgraded, you have more compression, and you can already put more camshaft in it, it's a better combination. Has anybody ever done that? Have you done an upgrade where you've put the Gen 6 heads on the Gen 5 short buck, especially with a mild cam? And if so, how did it turn out? Let me know in the comments. I'm Richard Holden, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and make sure to suggest other tests.